First up in our Hollywood saga, we've got Jonathan Majors. Remember him? The bright and shining star who everyone thought would be the next big thing. Well, plot twist, he's found himself on the less glamorous side of a guilty verdict for assault and harassment. It's like one of those movie plot twists that make you spill your popcorn. Megan has bolted faster than lightning. Yep, she stitched Majors faster than you can say scandal, leaving him to fend for himself. In the high stakes world of fame and fortune, it's every star for themselves, right? Now the internet detectives have been and having a field day with this. They noticed a moment where Majors tried to play the knight in shining armor, fixing Megan's hair. But oops, he missed a braid sticking out of her bun. Talk about a rookie move. One eagle-eyed Twitter user couldn't help but quip, he's so new dating black women that he left that braid sticking out of her bun. Oh my God. Talk about a fashion faux pas caught on camera. Another comment was like, that's what I was thinking. Like fix her bun too. Clearly the crowd was expecting some top-notch hairstyling skills for Majors. And well, he didn't quite deliver. And then there's this speculation about their whole relationship. One skeptic pondered, was this fake and planned because it seemed so fake and planned, lol. She didn't struggle with her hair slash coat until the cameras were visible and conveniently stopped there. It's like everyone turned into amateur detectives overnight. Another added their two cents, saying two things. One, their relationship looks so hallmark, holiday, Christmas movie fake. Two, something about how he looked in the camera. So were they or weren't they? The plot thickens and the internet can't seem to decide. Let's turn back the clocks to earlier this year. Matrix was on top of the world, with fans falling all over themselves to get a glimpse. But then, the skies turned dark with domestic violence charges involving his girlfriend, Grace Jabari. DMZ's version of events sounded like it was something ripped from a crime show. An argument in a cab, incriminating text, and accusations of getting physical. Talk about a bad episode in your life series. So, there's Majors, in handcuffs, leaving everyone's jaw on the floor. The guy known for being Mr. Nice Guy is suddenly front and center in a scandal. But hold your horses, because here's where it gets even wilder. Majors was the one who called 911. That's right, our leading man wasn't playing the distressed hero. He was the one ringing the alarm about his girlfriend, Grace. What happened exactly, do you know? No, I don't know. She's unconscious. She's naked from the bottom down. She has a sweatshirt on. She's my ex-partner. We broke up. The cops arrive and Grace spins a completely different yarn. According to her, their taxi ride turns into a scene worthy of an Emmy, with Major supposedly going all action hero on her. I banged on the door. I've been at the apartment for about 40 minutes now. I couldn't get in. I finally went downstairs and asked the doorman to help us. They let me in via the, the handy. The officers, doing their best detective impression, notice some marks on Grace and figure Majors is their guy. And now, everyone's playing detective. Why would Majors call the cops if he was the villain of the story? Some started muttering about this thing called Darvo, where the accused tries to turn the tables and play the victim. Was Majors trying to be a real life plot twister or was he genuinely caught in a bad script? Only time will tell in this Hollywood drama. But hold up, don't shoot the messenger here. I'm just dishing out what's being served on the gossip platter. Majors, keeping it cool, gets himself a lawyer and zips his lip, only speaking through his legal team. Smart move, because you know how things can get twisted. His lawyer comes out swinging, claiming Majors is an innocent as a kitten. She's talking about dropping some bombshell evidence like it's hot new movie trailer. She's got video footage, witness statements, and plot twists, written statements from Grace taking it all back. The lawyer's painting a picture of a minor misunderstanding blown out of proportion, with Majors caught in the middle of a storm. So we have filmmaker A.B. Allen, who's basically like, surprise, that good guy image, all smoke and mirrors. He fires off a tweet so cryptic, it could be a riddle. Talking about an actor everyone's gaga over who's actually a nightmare in disguise. And guess what? He's talking about none other than our man Jonathan, aka Kang the Conqueror from the Marvel Universe. Talk about a plot twist. Alan doesn't just stop at cryptic tweets. He drops a bombshell claiming Jonathan went full action hero mode on him, and not in a cool way, slapping him right in the middle of a shoot. Ouch! And according to Alan, he's not the only one who's had a taste of Jonathan's not-so-sweet side. So, picture this. A hairstylist who's working with Jonathan steps into the spotlight, ready to spill the tea. She's not naming names, but come on. It's not rocket science to figure out who's at the center of her tail. She describes Jonathan not as the Prince Charming from the movies, but more like a real-life bad guy serving up a mix of harsh words and dare we say, a side of physical altercation. This brave soul, armed with her scissors, recounts tales of being slapped for not being the flash of hairstyling, along with enduring those eye-roll-worthy comments that would make anyone toes curl. Meanwhile, our dear Jonathan is out there 
raking in the love and applause on social media for his Mr. Nice Guy persona. Oh, the sweet, sweet irony. So what's the deal here? Is Hollywood's golden boy not so golden after all? Or is this just another day in the life of Tinseltown, where gossip spreads faster than a wildfire? Now, a makeup artist claims she got a not-so-friendly slap from Jonathan during a photo shoot. You could almost hear her saying, how's that for a beauty tip? Then, a photographer chimes in with her story of Jonathan getting a bit too hands-on. And just when you think it couldn't get even more tangled, an ex-girlfriend strides onto the stage, ready to dish out her own experience of being treated like a yo-yo in their relationship. She even recalls a terrifying moment when she had to call the boys in blue on him. Talk about the drama. Now, everyone's scratching their heads, wondering if this is the same Jonathan they've been cheering for. Behold the phone. There's still a group of diehard fans holding up he's innocent signs, convinced he's just caught in some twisted plot to wreck his career. Just when you think this Hollywood tale couldn't get any more tangled, it does. Jonathan's ex, the leading lady in this drama, pulls a fast one. She steps up with a casual, oops, my bad, declaring that Jonathan never really went into villain mode with her. It's like she's saying, sorry for the drama, folks, as if she accidentally ordered the wrong drink at Starbucks. She admits that while Jonathan wasn't exactly Prince Charming, sending him to jail isn't on her wish list. Instead, she suggests a helping hand might be more fitting than a pair of handcuffs. And then, wait for it, she confesses she's been riding her own mental health roller coaster, not quite sure if her memories are playing tricks on her. I was more messed up than a soap opera plot, she admits. She didn't plan for her story to hit the headlines, but once it did, she just went along for the ride. And in a tearjerker moment, she's like, I still care about Jonathan. No hard feelings, buddy. So the plot thickens, and it's thicker than peanut butter on a cold day. Jonathan's ex does a complete 180, saying he didn't lay a finger on her. Everyone's doing mental gymnastics trying to figure out if Jonathan's the villain or just a guy caught in the storm of false accusations. Some are waving the he's innocent flags, while others are whispering about his magical ability to make people change their stories. Fast forward to the trial, and it's a spectacle. The prosecution is laying out evidence like they're on an episode of Law & Order. They've got photos of injuries, witness accounts, you name it. Meanwhile, Jonathan's lawyer is pulling out off stop, suggesting the ex-girlfriend's mental health issues might have led to this made-up story. It's like watching a magician trying to distract the audience while the rabbit runs backstage. But the jury? They're not buying any of these tricks. They slap Jonathan with a guilty verdict for assault and harassment. And just like that, our story takes another dramatic turn. And now, here we are. Jonathan's guilty verdict has hit his career like a wrecking ball. Disney and Marvel gave him the boot. Talk about a fall from grace. The guy's future is hanging on by a thread, and everyone's left reeling from this roller coaster of a saga. It's a mix of shock, disappointment, and a whole lot of, did that really just happen? But what do you think? Is this the final curtain call for Jonathan's career? Or is there a comeback story waiting in the wings? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And hey, if you're intrigued by the twists and turns of Hollywood's most dramatic stories, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more.